Good morning, fellas, and welcome back to Me Plays Games. My name is Matt, and most abilities in Pokémon are strictly beneficial. They make your Pokémon objectively better off than if they didn't have them. Flash Fire gives you an immunity and a boost to your fire moves, Huge Power doubles your attack stat, and Static, Poison Point, and Flame Body can passively spread status conditions to your opponents. But not all abilities are like that, so today I wanted to talk about some double-edged sword abilities, ones that benefit you in some way, but also have some sort of drawback. Alright, let's get started. The first ability I wanted to highlight today is No Guard. This ability is really solid, because it makes every move you use bypass accuracy checks, meaning they'll never miss. Even if the target is underground using Dig or in the air using Fly, they'll still get hit by No Guard moves. And that goes for any other moves with a semi-invulnerable turn too. So you can effectively use moves that most other Pokémon wouldn't, because they normally have low accuracy. A couple notable examples are Machamp using Dynamic Punch, Mega Pidgeot using Hurricane, or Golurk using Mega Kick. Don't use Mega Kick, though. Great, so what's the downside? Well, the same way you'll always hit your opponents, they'll also always hit you. All moves that are used by or against you bypass accuracy checks, so Sleep Power and Hypnosis effectively become Spore if they're used against you. That also means in the off chance your opponent has a one-hit KO move, it's guaranteed to knock you out. But the benefits of this ability outweigh the drawbacks, because no guard Pokémon can build better movesets with this ability in mind. That typically doesn't work in the other direction, though. Your opponent usually won't know if you're bringing in no guard Pokémon to a battle, so they can't pick stronger or less accurate moves to take them out. Even though the ability goes both ways, the player using the ability is getting more out of it than their opponent. Guaranteed confusion from Dynamic Punch, Hurricane that can be used effectively without rain, rock moves that actually flip and work. No Guard allows you to do all sorts of things intentionally. If your opponent hits an inaccurate move thanks to No Guard, that's a happy coincidence for them. So it is a double-edged sword, but it's like you only have the time to sharpen one edge this morning. There's another downside of No Guard, but this one has more to do with game balance. There are some moves that No Guard Pokémon can't learn, because otherwise they become obviously overpowered. Abilities didn't exist in Generation 1, and back then Machamp had access to the TM for Fissure, a move that's a guaranteed one-shot if it hits. The drawback is obviously pretty severe to compensate, it only has 30% accuracy. It was removed from Machamp's learn set in Gen 2, and it kinda can't be added back now. If No Guard Machamp was compatible with Fissure, it would just one-shot literally everything, and you just have to deal with it. The only way to take Machamp out would be by outspeeding it, and knocking it out before it has a chance to use Fissure. I mean, flying types exist and they're immune to Fissure, but you've got five other Pokémon on your team to take those out. <laughs> Machamp's base speed is 55, but it can become faster with a Choice Scarf, since Fissure would be the only move it really needs. In this case, the only Pokémon that could possibly outspeed Machamp, and even have a fighting chance of knocking it out, are ones with at least 107 base speed. Roughly 90% of Pokémon are slower than that, and even then, the fastest Pokémon still has to be strong enough to one-shot it immediately. So most opponents would have no shot beating it whatsoever. Hone Edge and Double have no guard as well, so they can't learn Guillotine for similar reasons, even though that would be a logical move for them otherwise. Double is even slower though, so more Pokémon can outspeed it, even with a Choice Scarf. One other fun fact, there is one Pokémon that can dodge hits from opponents with no guard, Tatsugiri. It's immune to the effects of its ability in double battles, as long as there's a Dondozo on the field as well. Then Tatsugiri's ability, Commander, will activate, and it'll jump inside Dondozo's mouth, where it becomes invincible till Dozo faints. Contrary is another double-edged sword ability, but if you use it right, it's got more benefits than drawbacks. If you have this ability, all your stat stage changes are inverted. So for example, Growl normally lowers the target's attack by one stage, but it'll raise your attack instead if you have Contrary. So it's a good form of insurance against your opponent lowering your stats, with stuff like Intimidate, Apple Acid, Strength Sap, and Icy Wind, among other moves and abilities. You know what's just now occurring to me as I'm reading this script? If your opponent has Swagger, that'll confuse you, but it'll lower your attack instead of raising it, so you'll take less confusion damage. Not all that useful if you're using a physical attacker, but, you know, there are a couple of special attacking Pokémon with Contrary, so they might find that helpful. But this ability really shines in the offensive department. Moves like Close Combat, Super Power, Draco Meteor, and Leaf Storm are really strong, but in exchange they lower the user's stats when they hit. But with Contrary, you can use these moves to raise your stats instead. Superior can be a terrifying sweeper thanks to this ability, even though its attacking stats aren't stellar to start off. By using Leaf Storm once, you'll double your special attack instead of having it. If you use it three times, you'll max out at four times special attack. Most of the time, Draco Meteor and Leaf Storm aren't moves you can spam, because they lower your special attack by quite a bit. But Contrary flips that on its head. Lorantis can do the same sort of thing, because it gets Contrary and Leaf Storm as well, but it's not as good at it as Superior is. Leaf Storm is still its best attacking move, but it's mostly used for its utility moves, like Defog and Aromatherapy, which help keep the rest of its team healthy. Another Pokémon with Contrary is Malamar, which learns the Fighting-type move Super Power. Normally, it lowers your attack and defense by one stage apiece, but Malamar's stats get raised instead. 
so you're effectively able to do big damage and get a bulk up boost at the same time. Obviously, the downside of this ability is that it goes the other way too. Anything that boosts your stats will drop them instead. That makes traditional boosting moves like Calm Mind, Bulk Up, and Nasty Plot effectively unusable with Contrary. Unless you really want to style on your opponent, I guess. I'll lower my attack on purpose and I'll still whoop you! <laughs> Now let's take a look at Hustle, and this ability is absolutely infuriating. It increases your attack stat by 50%, which is great, but that's a big boost, so it's gotta have some sort of drawback. To provide an example to compare Hustle to, the Held Item Choice Band also provides a 50% boost, but the drawback is fairly manageable. You can only use the first move you select until you switch out. Just means the Pokémon holding it will probably only be on the field for a couple turns at a time. But Hustle is way worse, because in exchange for boosting your attack stat, your moves become 20% less accurate. This ability is just not fun to deal with, because it basically turns all your physical moves into Stone Edge. And no one likes Stone Edge. Generation 5 is infamous for introducing a ton of Pokémon that evolve at really high levels. Zvialis evolves into Hydreigon at level 64, which is a higher level than the entire Elite Four, as well as all of N and Getus' Pokémon. Hydreigon has a solid ability Levitate, but Zvialis and their pre-evolution Dino are stuck with Hustle. That means if you want to use a Hydreigon in the Pokémon League, you have to do a ton of grinding beforehand, and if you're using any physical moves, you have to deal with that brutal low accuracy while you grind. It's worth noting Hustle doesn't affect special moves at all. It doesn't make them any stronger, but it also doesn't lower their accuracy. But if you're using Hustle on a Pokémon with exclusively special moves, then you effectively have no ability whatsoever. Not ideal, but hey, it's better than missing a million moves in a row, I guess. Fun fact, Durant has access to three abilities, and two of them are Hustle and Truant, which are quite possibly the exact opposite of each other. Because if it has Truant, it'll loaf around and do nothing every other turn. I love how I said big attack boosts need a drawback, but like... Huge power and pure power exist. Oops. Next up, let's look at Pokémon X and Y's cover legendaries, Xerneas and Evil Tall. They have signature abilities that boost the power of certain types of moves by 33%. Fairy Aura and Dark Aura. I'll give you 36 and a half minutes to guess which time. Time's up. Both Pokémon obviously appreciate their stab types being boosted even further, but it also does the same for every other Pokémon on the field. So if Xerneas sets up Fairy Aura, and his opponent also has a Fairy-type move, that'll also be boosted by Xerneas' ability. It's not the worst thing in the universe, but it's still something to keep in mind. Same with Evil Tall's Dark Aura. Evil Tall doesn't mind boosting opposing Dark moves as much, though, because the Dark-type resists itself, so it wasn't taking big damage from them anyway. But it's just a tad bit more dangerous for Xerneas, because Fairy doesn't resist itself. Overall, Fairy Aura is still mostly a helpful ability, especially because of Xerneas' signature move, Geomancy. After charging up on turn 1, Geomancy boosts Xerneas' special attack, special defense, and speed by two stages on turn 2. But if you hold the Power Herb, you can skip the charging turn and boost up right away. Between those stat boosts, the same type of attack bonus, and the Fairy Aura ability, Xerneas' Moon Blast becomes incredibly strong. It's been one of the strongest legendaries in the game since its debut in Gen 6. Before we move on, I wanted to let you all know that channel memberships are now available on MePlays Games. If you've been loving my videos, you can support the channel for as little as $2.99 a month. If you sign up for the Nidoran tier, you'll get a shoutout at the end of each video, as well as exclusive emoji for comments. The Nidorino tier is $4.99 a month, and on top of that you can vote on which video I make next. If you decide to go up to the Neo King level for $9.99 a month, you'll gain access to exclusive Let's Plays. As of now, I've got a few episodes of New Super Luigi U available, and I'll be adding more games in the future. If you don't want to become a channel member, perfectly fine, but also consider subscribing if you're enjoying my videos. This next ability is kind of a double-edged sword, but one of the edges is like, a pillow. Zero to Hero is the signature ability of Palafin, a new water type in Gen 9. At the start of a battle, Palafin is a pretty unimpressive Pokémon. A 457 base stat total isn't that great when you're fully evolved, but if you switch out and bring Palafin back in later, it'll transform into its hero form. Palafin Hero has incredible stats, plucking in with a legendary tier total of 650, including a ridiculous 160 attack stat. Hold on, is that the same as Groudon? No, it's higher than Groudon, dear god! <laughs> this is barely a double-edged sword, though, because it's super easy to get the hero form quickly. All you have to do is start the battle with Palafin, use the move Flip Turn or just switch out normally, and you effectively have a legendary on your team for the rest of the battle. And Palafin makes good use of its stats, too. It's got a new signature move in Jet Punch, which is just an objectively better Aqua Jet. Both are priority moves, but Jet Punch has 20 more base power. It also has access to the new move Wave Crash, a water-type version of Brave Bird or Flare Blitz. 
On top of that, it also gets coverage moves like Acrobatics, Ice Punch, and Close Combat. It can also boost its incredible stats even further with Bulk Up. Having to switch out to become your strongest form isn't much of a hindrance at all, because in competitive play, you're going to be doing a lot of switching anyway. When Scarlet and Violet came out, Palafin was one of the first Pokemon to be banned from competitive singles. It was sent to Ubers almost immediately. Let's also talk about three pretty similar abilities, Insomnia and Vital Spirit, which are identical, and the tangentially related Comatose. Insomnia and Vital Spear prevent you from falling asleep, and Komala's signature ability is Comatose, which is kind of the same, but also kind of the exact opposite. We'll get back to that in a second. Let's start with the other two. Not being able to fall asleep is mostly a good thing. There's all sorts of sleep moves running around, like Spore, Sleep Powder, Yawn, and Hypnosis. Being able to prevent those moves from working is pretty valuable, but it also comes at the cost of not being able to put yourself to sleep. If you want to use Rest, you're out of luck. Insomnia and Vital Spirit prevent that too. You would have to pick a different ability to use Rest Strats, unless you have a Vigoroth, in which case you're out of luck. Vital Spirit is its only ability. I mean... Mega Mewtwo Y also has no choice but to use Insomnia, but like, it's a Mega Mewtwo. You're fine. One other thing I wanted to mention, Delibird gets both of these abilities, which is entirely redundant. Huh, come to think of it, we've talked about all three of Delibird's abilities today. Its third ability is Hustle. Meanwhile, Kamala is always treated as if it's asleep by the game, thanks to its signature ability, Comatose, but it's still able to move like a Pokemon that's awake. That's got a surprising amount of benefits. For one, you're able to use moves like Sleep Talk and Snore all the time. Don't use Snore though, it's not strong. Your opponent also can't put you to sleep for real, so you won't be a sitting duck thanks to Spore. But the biggest benefit is that you can't be given any other status condition. In Pokemon, statuses don't overwrite each other. If a Pokemon is paralyzed, it's immune to getting burned by Flamethrower or frozen by Ice Beam. Since sleep is a status condition, and the game acts like you always have it, it's impossible to status a comatose Pokemon. The drawback here is the same as Insomnia and Vital Spirit. Rest doesn't work, so that's a healing option you just don't have access to. But like... Whatever, man. The last ability I wanted to talk about today is Rivalry. Whenever a Pokemon with this ability attacks a target with the same gender, the power of the move will be boosted by 25%. That'd be nice if that's all the ability did, but unfortunately I'm not done. If you attack a Pokemon of the opposite gender, your moves will become 25% weaker. So this ability almost always modifies damage in some way, unless you're attacking a Pokemon with no gender, like Cryogonal, or most of the legendaries. When you're building a Pokemon team, you almost never have to worry about what gender your Pokemon are. It almost never comes up in battle, so there's no reason to carefully select genders. You're not going to run into the move Attract, and almost no Pokemon prefer the ability Cute Charm, because there's only a 50-50 chance their opponent is going to be the right gender for them to work. So that means Rivalry will essentially boost and weaken moves at random, because most people just let the game pick a gender for them. Some Pokemon are guaranteed to be a certain gender. Nidoking is always male, for example, which means if it has Rivalry, it'll always do 25% less damage against female-only Pokemon, like Kangaskhan, Miltank, Tinkaton, and, well, you know, Nido Queen. Just use Sheer Force, man. Rivalry is way too volatile to be useful. Oh, by the way, this ability also boosts confusion damage. I guess the logic here is you're the same gender as yourself, but come on, man, you can't throw them a bone? Well, that's all I got for today. Leave a comment with anything you'd like to see me talk about, and consider becoming a channel member. I'll see you all next time. Good night, fellas. Sleep well.